good afternoon good afternoon yeah uh, today i am going to talk about uh, something which is about the tie boot model which we haven't uh, covered in the previous lecture this is part of the second module as well as the last module the fiscal federalism part so let us actually completely understand what is fiscal federalism as well as this uh, particular decentralized model, which is uh, called the tie boot model. Uh, in the context of United States as well as India, we will see that what is actually uh, its implication in different uh, spaces. Okay, so uh, mm, let me go to the uh, lecture uh, straight away. So we know that actually, uh, uh, India as well as United. Why? Because the model Taibut model was actually introduced by Charles Taibut, in and he talked about uh, the American uh, system where uh, people can migrate from one county to the other county, uh, and uh, they can actually choose their loca locality. If uh, one locality's tax is very higher, at the same time, if they don't have sufficient level of uh, or you know, satisfactory level of public utility, then they can actually migrate from one place to another. So in that context, uh, he, he in fact introduced this kind of a model to understand that, you know, whether people can move on, uh, whether it is actually uh, individually decided, uh, in, whether people can decide individually and uh, move from one state to another. But at the same time, a uh, country like India, we also follow a federal structure. We call it as quasi-federal system. Uh, but in the United States, the county, the states has uh, sometimes uh, bigger uh, autonomy. Like some state even have different policy, economic policy with that of the other uh, state. So there is no comparable point or even a federal point. So in that sense, uh, the uh, federal structure of United States is uh, different from the Indian structure where we are moving towards a largely a, a kind of centralization these days. But still, of course, we in uh, spirit as well as in writing, we have a federal structure. Uh, that federal structure is what is called a quasi-federal structure. So this is what is uh, the, the, the simple understanding uh, of the structure of the economy. Uh, that is the United States economy and Indian economy. Indian economy also, you have actually uh, limitations to apply this particular model because uh, this is in the outset we have to keep in mind. You know, this question immediately uh, in a, uh, uh, you know, pop up everyone's head because uh, the Indian uh, uh, states are uh, not only, uh, you know, uh, it is actually a geographical, it is not only geographically, you know, constraint, but also linguistically as well as identified by their lang uh, la language as well as other barriers uh, of um, moving from one point to the other or one state to another, one county, one district to another is prevailed. So in that context, uh, you know, uh, it is not that easy to actually migrate from uh, one place to another, but of course it is possible to migrate. And we do, Malayali uh, community is one of the community, in fact, uh, migrate largely in that context. But anyway, uh, theoretically, you still don't have an identity there. You will be identified as a Malayali, even if you go to Calcutta or uh, uh, Kolkata or in Delhi or in Jammu when, or in Mumbai, everywhere or wherever you go, your identity has always been uh, seen as a Malayali in that sense. So, uh, so this, uh, but in the United States, you can even uh, move from one state to another, one county to another, freely, much easier, easily than Indian context. So, uh, that is the outset which we have to understand this theory. Of, but uh, as a theoretical model, we have to uh, see the merit also in in, uh, in this one. I'll come to that later. So. Uh, what we are going to deal with is the optimal fiscal federalism, local government in Iowa and Kerala. As an example, we'll see that Iowa, uh, Iowa uh, state and uh, Kerala state, then uh, redistribution across communities, okay? So the optimal fiscal federalism, that is the question of which activity should take place at which level of government. This is the most important question as far as this particular 
So uh, the question is, uh, how should various responsibility is being allocated to different levels of government? Is centralized government decision making desirable? Are locally raised tax a good way to pay for service provided locally? So these are the questions uh, uh, we are going to discuss. So a uh, federal system consists of different levels of government that provide public good and services and have some scope for making decisions. So uh, this is quite obvious. I have already pointed in the very beginning. So for, uh, fiscal federalism explores roles of uh, different levels of government and how they relate to one another. So this is what is the point uh, which we need to discuss. So distribution of all US government expenditure by level of government. So let's look into the data uh, of at least the last uh, maybe uh, 100 years, uh, a century. So in 100, uh, 1900, uh, that is uh, the beginning of the last century, uh, that is federal uh, spending was 34.1% and the state is spent on only 8.2%, where the local government was 57.7%. So this was the composition of the uh, total spending. From that point, uh, it was slowly, you know, when you look into the uh, middle of the year, that is in the middle of the century, that is uh, till the end of the war, uh, that is Second World War, uh, the spending was almost the same, not uh, greatly improved in that sense. But after 1950s, the spending of the state, uh, the federal spending was actually increased. At the same time, the local and state government was also being uh, reallocated in that sense. So now in, uh, in the end of the uh, century, uh, the federal spending was uh, of 51%, that the half of this total spending is under federal uh, government, whereas the state government spent 20.9%, which is uh, maybe uh, three times, uh, roughly two, uh, two times, okay? So... Uh, they, but the local government had uh, reduced considerably in that sense. So that means there is a redistribution of spending by federal government, state government, and local government. Okay. So this is the source uh, quantitative aspect of federal structure study of six centuries. Okay. In that uh, paper, fiscal federal, uh, the, the, the state level had actually, you know, the, the graph has already said, and then, then uh, a new uh, uh, graph says uh, not a different picture altogether. In but the federal uh, one thing which is very stark in that the federal role had increased. That is the central government's uh, the United States also the central government spending had increased considerably. This is also true in Indian context. I'll come to that uh, in a while. So uh, there uh, also you can see the similar picture. But at the same time, the state, the, the real allocation, allocated uh, spending from the uh, um, uh, local government's point of view had improved in that sense. Of course, that spending is comes to the state government and state government is actually allocated that money to local government in India. So this is what is the difference. So technically, the Indian case is only two government, in fact, spends properly. That is uh, the central government and the state government. Central government spends through their own policy, the centrally sponsored schemes and other schemes, which is central character, central in character. But at the same time, the state government is uh, considerably spent, and uh, they, uh, part of their income has be uh, has diverted to uh, the local government, and they do. But uh, the uh, income generation, generating capacity of the state government, uh, so, sorry, the local government is very minimal in Indian. Though we have actually the uh, Panjaiti Raj Act, which is in fact entitles the central, uh, the, the local government to uh, be a very decisive uh, player in the spending or the uh, local economy is concerned. But uh, we haven't achieved that part, but only the uh, devolution uh, has to come from the center or the state, the current uh, scenario. So this is the difference of the uh, central, uh, the Indian uh, spending with that of the United States. So subnational uh, in that paper, we have seen that the six countries, they, they were talked about like um, subnational government spending and the revenue share of, uh, this is the uh, data which they were provided in that sense. 
So in the United States, spending is 40% in the subnational level. Uh, and the revenue is also almost 40%. So in the in the subnational level, the generate uh, the, the, the fund generation is very high in the United States. But uh, as I said, in Indian context, no comparable figure we can actually have because the uh, subnational level uh, sort of uh, income generation is very minimal in the Indian context. Therefore, it is not a so uh, imp you know uh, comparable. Uh, country though, though, though the two states in fact two countries are in fact um, follows a uh, certain level of federalism uh, this is about the other uh, state also in, in Norway where uh, the spending is higher but the income generation is lower. this is also the case with uh, France this is also the case with uh, Portugal Greece and all so then uh, any country, if you take the income generation with that of the United States is actually less than what they spend. OECD average is also the same. So OECD, oil, the exporting countries, oil exporting countries, cooperation. So that country is also having a similar uh, kind of trend in that sense. Uh, but as far as the... Uh, Uh, federal structure of India is going to completely again different picture uh, shows a different picture. Uh, first, uh, now uh, the higher level of centralization in other nation exists because state or local government have almost no legal power to tax citizens. So this is why. Uh, but in India, you, I mean, in, of course, in uh, some uh, local tax is still with the local government, but their uh, uh, power is very very less in that sense. So like. Uh, professional tax or you can have also the tax like uh, entertainment tax etc that is only goes to the local uh, the very local that is this uh, panchayat or the block or uh, corporation uh, gets so in that sense you know, their income capacity is very limited by the legislation itself for the state or center so in that sense uh, you know you can't simply say that you know federalism is going to be prevailed unless you give them power to uh, tax as well as you know work but that is exists in the united uh, the country like the united states so that is why i have in the beginning said that you know uh, there uh, the, the autonomy of the state as well as the local bodies actually comes from not only spending uh, spending pattern but also their income generation pattern also use this sort of thing because where you have to purchase everything so if you want to be in that county you have to spend if you don't uh, feel happy then you just move away from that county to some other county so this is what is actually the kind of uh, you know um, uh, base where um, uh, Thai boot were uh, Thai boot was basically introduced this model <coughs> so many countries practices fiscal equalizations whereby the national government distribute grants to subnational government in an effort to equalize differences in wealth so there has been a move towards centralization around the world in the us there have been increased effort to shift control and the financing of public programs to the state such as with the welfare reforms in 1996 so optimal fiscal federalism uh, follows uh, uh, that is the public good provision uh, problem uh, compounded with issues of split level of government so this is what is called uh, the uh, what, optimum fiscal federalism. So what is the benchmark of uh, a central government has to do or a state government or the local government has to do? So this is basically the provision where who can provide uh, which kind, what kind of commodity and etc. So what is the optimum division of responsibility across different levels of government arises in this context? A theory of how the efficient of uh, efficiency of public good provisions may differ at different levels of government helps answer this question. The two of the major problem in the public good provisions are preference revelation and the preference aggregation. So these problems we have already uh, already uh, studied. That is preference revelation in the in the uh, in this context. Uh, it is difficult to design democratic institution to cause individuals. To reveal their preference honestly, so we have already seen in, in the earlier pricing more pricing of public good model, Clark Blue and Liard model, and all we have seen this problem preference revelation issues and preference aggregation issues also, 
another one that is difficult to aggregate individual preference into social decision this uh, this uh, preference aggregation uh, uh, issue we had uh, studied in the context of arrows impossibility and other uh, aggregation issues of an individual choice uh, however we have uh, uh, you know come out with uh, certain uh, suggestions also in that kind of uh, model uh, where uh, we lie in the tie boot model and a number of activities are run primarily at the state and local level so this is uh, the whole point so education public safety highways public welfare etc normally been laid down by the state level now in india also you have national highway authority you have also state highway as well as district and uh, the panchayat local government uh, uh, road transportation mechanisms and uh, the one of the highly networked uh, road uh, mechanism is in Kerala you all of you know that is this per uh, square kilometer uh, road network um, especially the Paka roads not Kacha road of course uh, the Paka roads uh, network uh, but the roads uh, no the, the criticism of this particular uh, pro, uh, region is that you know the 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 uh, wideness or the uh, breadth of the road is uh, uh, narrow that's but however the network of the road is quite uh, different to that of the other part of the uh, country you have also education you have a lot of all almost all the universities in the state is public university no private universities so far whatsoever so you may be having certain institution which is actually works outside uh the state uh they have basically you know um registered outside the state but almost all the uh universities in the state is actually uh public universities and you have public safety mechanism you have public welfare programs you have health system these are actually locally provided in that sense at the same time there are there are yojanas like uh and you have rb uh, this um um health uh, cards and other things which is an in insurance schemes etc in uh, which is actually operates in a national level so at this so in 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 the in 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 india many things comes under the concurrent list where the central as well as the state government can actually interplay uh or they can actually provide about the uh i mean they can provide the goods in both way the central uh, way as well as uh, the state way you have central universities at the same time you have also state universities so you have uh, public uh, hospitals like state run uh, hospitals like medical college and all at the same time you have national uh, um, institution like aims and other things which is also operates in the country so in that sense the public uh, the, the health system the education system everything is actually comes on the concurrent list uh, so the state as well as the central government play a very very important role uh, in, in this uh, in, in in the in the provision of pro, pro, providing of this kind of goods so it is a little bit complicated than the united states so that is what the whole point so when tai wood had laid his model 1956 he uh, published his paper and he argued that the ability of individuals to move across the restriction produces a market like situation to the local public good problem okay taibut showed that the inefficiency in public good provisions came from two missing factors one is shopping and the other one is competition now this is actually laid in a context so that you know government failure we have in the last lecture we, uh, last last lecture we had seen that there is a possibility of government failure too so when the government to fail because of two um, uh, situation where uh, there is a you know uh, failure so this is one is the uh, first one is called the shopping kind of situation the other one is a competition shopping induces inefficiency sorry so shopping induces efficiency in private markets competition induces right prices and quantities in private market so these are actually uh, things which is in fact uh, creates a market kind of environment so with the public goods provided at the local level competition naturally arises because individuals can vote with their feet by moving to one uh, another town without much disruption now i have already 
well, uh, you know, talked about the very premise that, you know, if you can move from one state to another or one county to another county without one town to another count, uh, town without much uh, problem, uh, though uh, in India also people can argue that you can buy land, but you will treat us a different person, you know, like Vairathan and all. So uh, therefore, uh, the, if you if you don't have this kind of disruption, then this model is actually uh, speaks uh, something which is very very interesting. And this induces fiscal discipline for local government and creates a new preference regulation devices. That is, if it it is not only actually talks about only spending side, it also uh, talks about an income generation because you spend money. Uh, in many of the Iowa or in any of the city which we talk is in the county which we talk, where if you want to actually get a pipe connection, if you want to actually have a good supply, then X county may be having good supply than Y county or, uh, you know, uh, then uh, Y county may be having a better uh, hospital facility or than X county. So these are actually the options which you have. Out of this option, you just uh, shop. Okay, that means you move from one one point to the another one, and you also pay. For example, there is a possibility in uh, United States that you know if your water supply is actually coming from the Y state is very bad. So you just say that I don't actually pay from your what. I don't want to actually have a water connection from your what. So instead of that, you go for an X ward, which is also the adjacent to your. Uh, this particular county and then you can also get water you have to pay in their residential area so this there is a lot of actually subnationalism involved in the united states and especially they are trying to experiment with a sort of a market in that sense you know we also uh, locally try to introduce some of this thing i'll come to that later so taibut argued that the threat of exit can induce efficiency in local public good production so if you don't provide good uh, Health facility, then we'll move. If you don't provide a good uh, water supply, then we will be moving. So these are the kind of threat people can actually cause, and you know they can uh, change their um, town. So it 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 in fact create a kind of a market situation. So under certain uh, condition, public good provision will be fully efficient at the local level. So of course, these conditions are uh, people criticize them unrealistic, you know. But still, you know, you can say that that sort of a condition, if you, if, uh, you know, uh, apply, then things can be good. So voting with your feet means in the Taibut's assumption, which is actually based on certain, sorry, Taibut uh, uh, model is basically based on certain assumptions. So I've already mentioned. So govern, what are these assumptions? Government activities generate no externality. This is absolutely you are trying to treat the public good provision as a private one. So this is uh, again people. Uh, uh, this is one of the uh, you know uh, criticism people basically leveled against this model, this assumption itself. So you cannot see uh, if you follow uh, the Friedman's mechanism of a positive uh, uh, economic analysis, then you cannot simply criticize the assumption. Anybody can have an assumption. Whether you can have. A conclusion which is a decisive conclusion or not is always a theoretical problem. So simply you criticize it is unrealistic and you know, people may not be agreeing because there are sometimes you have to uh, impose certain assumptions to make your uh, you know um, model workable. Uh, so, you, so you have to demonstrate that. So government act in that sense it is okay. So government activity generate no externality. Individuals are completely mobile. People have prefer perfect information with respect to each community's public service and taxes. There are enough different communities so that each individual can find one with public service meeting her demands or his demand. The cost per unit of public service is constant so that if the quantity of public uh, service doubles, the total cost also doubles. Public services are Financed by a proportional uh, property tax, community can enact exclusionary zoning laws, statutes that prohibit certain use, uses of land. These are actually called the, the assumptions under the uh, type of model. So uh, type, uh, uh, the criticism people had leveled against uh, this model is basically uh, um, argue because of the following reason. That is, 
The competition may not hold because it requires perfect mobility, as the uh, assumption says. The perfect mobility is a very, very uh, a stringent assumption as far as, uh, as, far as a movement of the uh, individuals are concerned. So we, I have already uh, mentioned about this. Even though I'm able to move from one place to another, but my movement is depends on many other factors, which is, you know, uh, makes my mobility, you know, temporary or, you know, uh, you know, not perfect, perfect in that sense. So it requires perfect information on the benefit individual receives and the tax they pay. So this is also the transparency uh, in that sense is a very essential part, information symmetry kind of situation. Again, it is leading to a perfect competition kind of situation and it requires enough choice of towns so that individual can find right level of public good in there. So it demands a lot of information. In fact, in fact, where you can find all this information is another set of questions. People uh, vehemently criticize this model, but as for a, as for as a cent, uh, decentralized model, this is one of the first in that kind, and that is why this has been taught. It doesn't mean that it <coughs> actually the whole theorem, which is. <clears throat> This is all our public good problem. So we are not talking about that. This is actually one of the uh, initiatives which is, you know, popularly talked because it is having an element of market understanding. So that is why this model um, uh, got momentum and uh, all of us are teaching. So this is a fact which is uh, just uh, not uh, very, very openly talked. So that's it. So a uh, tie boot financing is problematic. Again, another criticism was uh, 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 just followed from the earlier competition problem. That is, it is also requires uh, lump sum taxes that are independent of a, person, a person's income. This is viewed as highly inequitable. So it is more common for towns to finance public goods through proportional tax on homes, leading to the problem of poor chasing the rich so the user zoning can ameliorate this problem. So this is again, you no, know, that is in, uh, in, in uh, there are areas where you no know, Porsche area, good area as well as in you know, a bad area, all kinds of zoning come with this. Okay. So what is optimal allocation of economic responsibility among levels of government in federal? So this is another kind of question which we had, uh, you know, uh, continuing from the earlier. Uh, question that is in the beginning we we asked the same question. Now we'll discuss advantage and disadvantage of the decentralized system. So again, uh, in the Thai boots framework, we have already seen that uh, uh, there is always a kind of situation where people can uh, move from one place to another. At the same time, uh, you know they also weigh it is because uh, it is uh, based on the uh, services which is available in that region. So, uh, two way people can move as well as people's mobility depends on the quality of services which they get. So, this is this is determines the uh, quality of services which is going to be supplied by the uh, government on the other side, the, the local government. So, that is actually makes a check and balance in that sense. So, so in that sense, it is actually uh, nice, but. Uh, a country like us, we have in the beginning said that you know, you by legislation you, you can't do it, okay? Because by legislation you can't charge by legislation you can't charge a tax from person, uh, whether, for example, in in the city area of uh, whether you are uh, if you are a resident near uh, in the city Trivandrum city like uh, Kaudia or the adjacent in Jawaharnagar or anywhere, where uh, you have a very good quality of water supply, electricity, everything, you know, you are paying the same tax than the other person and as far as public provision is concerned. So the same corporation, random corporation, you pay same, exactly the same. You may be having a very different residential setup, but it is not actually the resident which is providing, unlike the other places. So it is again the corporation uh, system which has been, you know, uh, providing all this sort of uh, amenities. At the same time, maybe an adjacent colony may not be having this sort of privilege. Or even you talk about uh, the Trivandrum Corporation, let's go to Pundra. You know, it is talking uh, much on the 
So they don't have even water supply. Okay, a uh, good drinking water, though they are part of the same uh, corporation, Trivandrum Corporation, and they don't have that much of good water uh, supply. They don't have pipe system in that. So even corporation may be having for the namesake there. Uh, they have. Uh, it is not because they don't pay. They they want to. They are buying actually water uh, from uh, uh, Lori or the private suppliers. At the same time, the heart of the city, nobody is actually worried. And though the people have uh, uh, good income, having actually all this good facility, uh, but at the same time, the people who have lesser income, at the same time, they don't actually access, they don't have access on all these things. So there is always a, 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 a disparity even in the case of access in that sense. So this is actually makes a lot of uh, uh, question as well as the same model is also concerned. So we, we don't see that actually uh, uh, things are taken for granted everywhere and things are all good. So optimum, uh, the where uh, you have uh, the, uh, the, the, where you have to actually give concentration, where you have to actually provide goods, etc. cetera, it also comes with the discretion. Though, as I said, you know, 100 watts are there in the Trantum Corporation, but in the 100 watts, how many watts are entitled to all the facilities? Okay, we have to really th think about. Now, uh, we are very sure that at least a couple of uh, corporation wards in the, uh, you know, in the margins, in different margins, they don't have this also, the, uh, this uh, uh, facilities which the city uh, 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 residents are enjoying in that sense. Of course, the city has its own problem. Again, so I'll come to that later. Now, uh, the, the model implies that the extent to which public goods should be provided at the local level is determined by tax benefit linkage. But it, now we don't have it, in fact. But still, the United States, you, they do have the sort of a mechanism and strong linkage, such as local roads means most resident benefit and the good uh, should be provided locally. Weak linkage means the most resident do not benefit and the good should be provided at a higher level. If residents can see directly the benefit they are buying with their property tax uh, pro property tax dollar, they will be willing to pay local taxes. Otherwise, they may vote with their feet. This is what is actually the model. If that is the case, then the corporation should be you know, denounced by these people at margin in that sense. So, if because you know they are uh, elect, this is how we see that uh, the election takes place. You know, election. If you don't provide properly, then they'll be voting you out. So this is what is the mechanism. So the second factor uh, that determines the optimum federal structure is that the uh, this decentralization is the extent of positive externality. That is, if the local public good has a spillover to other community, they will be underprovided. In this case, higher level of government have a role in promoting the provision of this public good. Again, uh, now uh, an interesting anecdote we need to the two and from uh, city is being been has is had been benefited uh, of a good water supply because Arivikara Dam, all of you know about, it, right? Uh, and the water has been uh, uh, drawn from different part of uh, you know the hilly regions of Vidura and other part, you know that hill range, and it is brought to Trivandrum city. And in the meanwhile, you, you there are many villages being submerged. Okay, so uh, whose benefit we are all, or making all this for the city's benefit? But at the same time, you know, the uh, if you uh, if your uh, board has actually been in the corporation uh, perimeter, then uh, you need to you also need to. Be, Pay the same level of uh, tax or same level of car, uh, electricity charge, uh, same level of water bill, everything is same. But the benefit is not actually same. This is what I mentioned. In the coastal region, if you take, uh, of course, they 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 are also having the same sort of uh, payment mechanism. But the level of uh, enjoyment of the public good by them is actually discretionary in that sense. Water supply is a classic case in that sense. Okay, electricity, of course, they nowadays everybody enjoys electricity. Okay, without interruption and all. So uh, 
but we need to actually improve a lot in that sense. So this is actually what is the basis of the fiscal federalism as far as this model is concerned. So the third factor that determines the optimal level of decentralization is the economies of scale in production. Now, public goods with large economies of scale like national defense are not efficiently provided by many competing local jurisdiction. Public goods without large economies of scale like police protection may be provided more efficiently in type of competition. So the type of model therefore predicts that local spending should focus on broad-based program with a few externality and relatively low economies of scale. So example, it excludes road repairs, education, garbage, collection, and street cleaning, etc. Okay, and um, in the United States, so this is one data that is, it's uh, in 2005, $320 billion collected in property tax, almost all at the local level, play a key role in local public finance. In many Western states, this is public land fed, make payments in lieu of tax and many non-profit also making payment in, in lieu of taxes. So this is all the composition of a different uh, state in the United States where you have all this sort of income. But in India, things are completely different. So property tax liability is product of tax rate and the property assessed value, value of jurisdiction assigned to property. In many cases, assessed value corresponds to the market value, but more difficult if a property has not been sold recently. Wide range of credits and rollbacks can change the effect of tax in that sense. So property tax, I keep arguing for an increase in the property tax in the Kerala context in order to and also you need to make a certain legislation accordingly. Then only you can have a local uh, sustainable, you know, uh, development mechanism. Otherwise you can't. So, but uh, of course, as I said, you know, there is a lot of uh, legislation, legislative legal issues, which the state has to sort it out or the center and the state together has to sort it out. But unless you give a uh, proper, mechanism to the local level decentralization makes no sense in that sense so american system of local property tax originates with the british tradition and that is not american by itself it's british origin and important uh, link uh, importance linked to growth of frontiers feasible source of revenue that is equal to equal taxation of wealth overlapping and specific districts had revenue sources and colonial era had several tax excise and tariff post evolutionary war saw a uniformity clause added to property tax. So property tax applies to real estate and personal property individual paid for government services in proportion to their wealth. Yes, uh, so in the local government structure continues to evolve, that is in de devolution or decentralization trend uh, is also we are also followed this uh, uh, devolution and decentralization based on this mechanism. Uh, we know that in 1992-93 we had this Panjaiti Raj uh, bill in the parliament and later uh, uh, you know um, accepted as an act of parliament and it is enacted in the parliament in 93 and uh, I know in, in Kerala we had implemented the same in by 1996 itself very uh, immediately we uh, you know put in practice so then over a long like a fairly um, 25 years now 20, 25 years we have uh, fairly 25 years of experience of local uh, government but uh, in that what we understood it's still the devolution come from this state government as well as the central government for example centrally sponsored schemes fund comes through central scheme and it is comes to the local government that has to be implemented locally for example you know mg and rga programs where it has to be implemented from uh, uh, the the program is a central program and it has to be implemented locally so the fund comes through uh, and then the uh, local government spent but this local government had no role to collect uh, income sufficient level of income and fund accordingly so if that is the provision there then there is a high chance of actually developing 
uh, locally. So otherwise, it is very difficult because every every program is actually being determined from top to bottom. Uh, again, the state schemes also. Now, the uh, state uh, our state is having almost 30% of devolution through local government. It's a very positive kind of spending, uh, which is uh, taking place in different. Again, in that also, you have different subcategory that you have to spend this much of percentage to this much of a group. Uh, women component, uh, then you have, uh, 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 you know, it's chil child component, children's component. You have SCST, uh, backward community component. You have, again, uh, uh, based on different uh, other components also been adopted uh, in the uh, sort of. But uh, all this is, in fact, a top down model. It is nothing to do with the, 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 the local government has no autonomy in that sense completely or uh, you know, sufficiently to uh, generate income and to actually go further. Uh, now we are in 2020. Uh, this is actually, uh, uh, this is almost, I, as I said, you know, after uh, a half, uh, a quarter century, uh, the right has not yet flown uh, to the local government. Of course, it has still been controlled and directed from the top. So that is why the, the, the local efficiency of local government is, all, always not been, uh, you know, so sufficiently, uh, you know, addressed. Or we can't say that, you know, they are uh, performing fairly good because everything, every policy comes from, uh, they are just an executing agent. Let me uh, uh, conclude this. Uh, this portion uh, right now and if you have any question you can actually uh, ask so uh, I think uh, this brief uh, lecture is sufficient so thank you uh, if you have any question um, you can actually shoot yeah Hello? yes Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Listening. Tell me. Hello. Thai board model and or another. We are not going to do that. Technical.